Tonight's topic is accidental talisman. Do we own our stuff or does our stuff own us? It's a pretty fascinating uh, topic and I think probably uh, our guest should be introduced by Bishop Peterson. Um, you know, I would love to hear a little bit of story and how you guys kind of met and, uh, and some of this Bishop Peterson. Great. Uh, thank you so much, Bishop Canterbury. Um, our guest tonight is Ame uh, Kisa Morgan, a Chicago-based practitioner, and welcome. Welcome thank to the you. show. And um, I want to just explain how I got to meet uh, our guest tonight. She and, uh, and lives in the Chicago area, and we met through a couple of organizations that we both belong to, um, the Chicago Geomancy Club, as well as uh, the Owen Hermetic Society. And when I first met her, she told me about this idea that uh, this esoteric uh, philosophy that she was working to develop on the idea of accidental talismans that we our possessions can take on energetic significance and I was really fascinated by what by what she had to say and mm -hmm. wanted to bring her on the show um, and then I, of course I actually saw her give a detailed explanation of, of her philosophy and I was just so impressed that I started making some real changes in my own life so um, but any further to do what is an accidental talisman? How do you define an accidental talisman? Um, well, the best way to explain it is to uh, explain what a talisman is. And a mm -hmm. talisman is uh, something that has been given an intention. So mm -hmm. if you are a practicing magician, uh, you would purposely create a talisman. Um, very common talismans have to do with prosperity. If you want to welcome more money into your into your lifestyle, um, uh, something of that nature. So it's something that has been given an intention. Okay. So what an accidental talisman is then is something that has been given an intention uh, with perhaps maybe it's been overlooked. And, and how that happens uh, frequently is our collection of things. Everything that we own is a reflection of who we are. It mm -hmm. has had some meaning to us in the past or in the present. And um, and what happens is our things then kind of become these intentions. Right. And what is dangerous about that is if, if an item is useful and it is something that is current in our life and is a reflection of who we are now, then it is a, a good thing and a pleasurable thing and a useful thing. However, a lot of things that we hold on to are actually things that are draining our energy uh, and become these accidental talismans that are not helping us to move forward in our lives, but are actually keeping us locked to something in the past, something that who we were, a place where we had been, a concept that at one time had meaning to us, but mm -hmm. no longer has meaning to us now. And those things can really not only drag us to the past, but they can actually deplete our energy. Um, okay. The best example that I can give is, for instance, that horrible lamp that Aunt Mildred gave you on your wedding day. And you absolutely can't stand it, but oh no, I can't get rid of this because my great Aunt Mildred gave me, gave me this lamp. Hmm. But you put it in a room and suddenly you stop going into that room. So now you're being held hostage in your own house because of this horrible lamp that someone gave you and you feel obligated to keep. Mm -hmm. But if you were able to release that lamp back into the world, somebody might find that lamp and, and have great pleasure from that lamp and it would serve a wonderful purpose to that person mm -hmm. and would raise their energy. But instead with you, and if you keep it, it's it's you can't even go into the room that it's in. All right. Yeah. I mean, that's that's it. Yeah. And it's it's taking up space and you're moving it from space to space. We were just talking, I think, before the show about the expenses of moving. So you're mm -hmm. it's, all, it's it's taking up energy on multiple levels. It can be taking, you know, you're dusting it, you're putting physical labor into it, you're paying to move it around, it's taking up space that something else could be there, but there's also an energetic connection, which may be building over time. Wouldn't, would, would that be the case, that it could build over time the more you invest into Well, I, yes, I, I have been given permission to um, use uh, a friend of mine as an example. Okay. 
Uh, she has been carrying a particular necklace uh, that was given to her when she was 18. Okay. She is just now, she just turned 40 a okay. few weeks ago. So she's been dragging this necklace around for those several years. And the reason that she kept it is that it was given to a, a boyfriend of hers. Okay. Um, now, the, the necklace became dented. She stopped wearing it. And every time that she would wear it, her whole body language, everything about her would wilt. She would all just all of the energy would drain out of her when she touched this necklace, when she thought of this necklace, when she looked at this necklace. Um, and the reality of this story, how powerful this item became is that for the last 20 years, she has not been able to sustain a relationship with a man in that time wow. frame. And um, finally, uh, she asked me about it just a few days ago. And she said, do you think I would be able to find this gentleman with this necklace? I said, sure, because anything that has been given to you also has a connection to that person. So if you wanted to, there are many magical things that you could do. You could use it as a as a pendulum and use it over a map to give you an idea of where he might be located, that kind of thing. And, and all of a sudden I could see that she was like, oh, I could try that. And then it dawned on her, oh, I could try that. And it was really startling to her that this wow. object would could possibly have that kind of power. So mm. she decided right then and there that she was going to get rid of it. And I suggested that when something has this much power to it, that really it's best to give it back to the earth, either bury it in the ground or give it to water or to, if it's able to burn it, to give it to fire, um, to release it back to the elements that create all life. So she decided that she was going to release it into the Great Lake. And when she did, she cried and she suddenly, for the first time in 20 years, she felt free. And what's wow. interesting to note is that um, since that time, two men that she had significant relationships with her, not this particular man that gave her the necklace, but two other men called her to talk, really? to renew her, their relationship with her. Wow. To, yeah. So, I mean, it's to me uh, as a, as a, as a spiritualist, uh, I really truly believe that there really are no coincidences. Mm -hmm. So for ha to have two failed relationships immediately call her once she was able to finally get yeah. rid of this really powerful talisman that she was dragging with her um, is really something worth noting. I think it is. I think it absolutely is. And for anybody who is you know, involved with the esoteric arts, that's... Pretty remarkable, but it's something that we may not even be thinking about. You know, we might be thinking about uh, intentional, you know, have I intentionally been cursed? Is this bad karma? But we may have something that we've been dragging around with us that's kind of in front of our nose, but mm -hmm. we're not even we're not even paying much attention to it. What do you think, Bishop Canterbury? Well, you, you know, I find this whole entire subject pretty fascinating. You know, I'm sitting here when we're kind of in pre-show mode, and um, just thinking of like various examples and various things in our lives. I mean, um, you know, it could be, as you said, it could be anything. It could be, you know, an object of that one had maybe of, of a grandparent that maybe wasn't the kindest grandparent to you, but you feel some family obligation. And now this is maybe it's, uh, um, you know, maybe it's, uh, you know, something as simple as a candy jar or a candy dish, um, yeah. a little um, figurine. Um, if it was a grandfather, you know, maybe a pipe holder or anything. Um, but maybe this person caused you some harm, caused you some pain, uh, emotionally, psychologically, physically. Yeah. But yet you feel the obligation because it's family to hold on to this. And you've been dragging it around for five years, 10 years, 15 years, 20 years. And you may have various issues and you don't know what they are, but yet this is always here and it's always present. And some energy is being fed into this. And I, I you know, um, we've talked many times about the concept of kind of egregore. And I yes, think many yes. times that, you know, talisman you can almost think of as an, egreg an egregore, whether it's a, a word, a symbol, you know, yeah. something that we're kind of feeding energy into. And, um, 
even if this energy becomes unconscious and is still being fed, um, you know, we've got years of feeding this. Um, and I'm finding this all fascinating as we're discussing this because, you know, I think that this is more than just um, than just clutter. This isn't about clutter. This isn't simply about having too many possessions. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, but maybe to change subject a little bit on this um, is something that we can definitely continue in our uh, After uh, Dark program. But besides physical objects, do you think that the same type of accidental talisman can even um, come into play, even for some people with memories that they hold onto possession for so long that it becomes almost talismanic in the same way? Uh, I do. Um, for instance, uh, one of my uh, ideas about these accidental talismans is that you can actually have an accidental talisman as a concept. Mm -hmm. um, when you have a tangible item, though, it really gives you a way to focus that that concept. And if it's outdated, especially, you need to be careful mm -hmm. of that. Um, I just talked about my friend. I'll use my own uh, example here. Uh, one of the things that I was hanging on to was a, uh, I have a one child, only one. He is now eight years old. And the mm -hmm. one thing that I held on to and still have in my possession is uh, the breast pump that I used uh, when he was still uh, just a little baby. Mm -hmm. And the reason that I was holding on to it was because it was the concept of motherhood. So, yes, you and what it was is that I had all of these challenges to overcome as a mother and then as a single mother, a working mother, a working mother that works a night shift in a male dominated profession. Mm -hmm. um, so I had all of these challenges that I overcame. And so I have I've been holding on to this outdated concept of what motherhood is, what it should be and what I should have done and who I should be. So I do, I agree that it, it isn't necessarily the thing that's important. It's what it represents. But yes, I do think that people can hold on to uh, memories and concepts that are no longer serving themselves. You don't necessarily need a physical item. But definitely, if you have that physical item, I think it needs to go. Um, I, I, I don't need to hang on to what motherhood is not. Mm-hmm. All I have to do is look at the healthy eight-year-old child that I have in front of me. So, Well, I've got another question on this. Um, is that, I mean, for our listeners, um, you had mentioned, you know, possibly return it to, to the earth or to the water. Um, if it can be burned, burn it. Um, but let's say none of those things kind of appeal to someone or they don't live by the Great Lake, or they, you know, don't feel necessarily comfortable maybe walking out into a forest and digging a hole and burying something. Um, is the possibility, though, of that energy still being present if they simply say, you know what, I got this ring from this boyfriend when I'm 16 years old, I can feel this energy here, I need to get rid of it, and they simply pawn it. Wouldn't that energy still be present? All they've done is kind of try to get rid of it, but the energy is still out there, isn't it? I do believe that items, uh, if something has had a very specific intention put into it, whether purposely mm -hmm. or accidentally in these mm -hmm. cases, um, it does retain some of that energy. And um, uh, But I think that it's perfectly acceptable to release it back into the world. Like I said, Aunt Mildred's lamp is going to bring great joy to somebody else. And so the the depletion of energy that it gave you mm -hmm. is going to be negated if it once it receives a new intention from somebody else. Mm -hmm. However, like in the case of my friend, there was so much negative energy in that that she really felt that she needed something more significant than just releasing it into the world. And the other thing was, too, is that she was afraid that if she gave it to um, a secondhand shop, that she would return to the secondhand shop to constantly check on it. Uh. Gotcha. And so in that case, yep. she really needed something more per
explain, I believe, their intentions. You can feel the energy that was with them. Mm -hmm. But if somebody says, if somebody walks in and sees the lamp that you hate and goes, oh, that's such a beautiful lamp, then maybe it should be theirs because they can give it a positive intention that is going to then recharge it and release the negative energy that was with it. Hmm. Interesting. I think that's uh, um, probably a really good explanation of uh, how that energy can be released. Uh, Bishop Peterson, your, your thoughts on this? I, I think that that's, uh, that's one real good way of doing it. There are some things um, that I would probably say, as you said, pointed out, there may, there may be some things that are best released back to the earth or mm -hmm. released in a way that nobody's going to get at it for a variety of reasons. But I think that certainly if you have something like um, Aunt Mildred's lamp, which has primarily been an annoyance, it was given with good intentions, mm -hmm. um, there's no reason why somebody else can't value it and, mm -hmm. you know, and, and become something entirely different, even if it's just some ironic hipster who wants to do a 70s era living room. I mean, you know, it, it, that, that's fine. That's awesome. Um, but I, I think that a little bit of discernment there is probably a good idea. Well, we are going to be continuing uh, this discussion in, uh, in our podcast, Talk Gnosis After Dark. Um, those of you who support the show through the, pa through the Patreon will be able to, to watch that. Otherwise, um, you will be able to uh, uh, download the show on Apple iTunes. Uh, you can also uh, visit... Uh, uh, GnosticNYC.com slash TalkGnosis slash to download the podcast probably tomorrow sometime. Uh, but I'm looking forward to continuing this discussion. Absolutely. Also, um, for those of you who have been watching, uh, who are watching, um, can you identify any uh, accidental talismans in your life? And if so, what do you plan to do with them after watching the show? We'd love to hear from you in the comments section uh, on YouTube. So please do feel free to share your own experiences with us. Um, also, I would like to point out to everybody that uh, we don't have any ads on our YouTube show. So if you have found it uh, helpful and you're interested in supporting this and other Gnostic programming, please consider becoming a patron of ours on, on Patreon. Uh, patreon.com p-a-t-r-e-o-n dot com slash gnostic um, you can pledge a small amount even just a few cents per video or podcast and you can set a cap monthly cap for your contributions and uh when you do so, you are directly supporting the development of this and other esoteric and gnostic programming Fantastic. Well, again, we do appreciate all the feedback, as Bishop Peterson stated. Um, make sure you look out for us on social media. We are on Facebook, as well as here on YouTube. You can always reach us at TalkGnosis at GnosticNYC.com. Drop us a note. Tell us what you think about the shows. Um, show ideas. We get some great topics from our viewers. Um, drop us some comments on the shows. Like we said, we'd love to hear if you have any accidental talisman, I think this is uh, could be a great topic to see how our viewers on YouTube, uh, you know, kind of uh, talk about this one on on things maybe they've noticed in their life that so they've seen this. They go, "Wow, I've never thought about that before." Yes. All right. Well, this has been a production of the Gnostic NYC Network. If you enjoyed this show, please share it with your friends, click the like button, and subscribe to our channel. Opinions expressed on this program do not necessarily represent the views of Gnostic NYC or any other organization. No animals were harmed during the production of this show. And for more talk gnosis, tune in every Wednesday for new episodes. Thanks so much for joining us. Good night. Good night, everyone.